we are going to talk about today's question one on our practice exam for engine 45. Sorry, I'm lost. Can you give me crystallographic directions? So planning to take a trip to Santa Cruz to surf. Um, on way to the I-5, I got lost, ended up in a quantum leap type situation. Now I'm traveling through crystal structures. So I need some help navigating through all these different directions, cells, and planes. So let's read the problem. For A to C, identify the conventional unit cell. So this looks like BCC. This looks like FCC, and this is simple cubic. All right, so far so good. Um, what are the number of atoms and planes in each cell? Well, the number of atoms, or actually, number of atoms in each cell, excuse me, and identify the crystallographic direction of a plane. So number of atoms for BCC, two, FCC, one, or actually, no, one, four. Simple cubic, here. So remember, it might be helpful to have this table uh, built up. So BCC, FCC, so. Let's look at this. So number, actually, let me flip this. So let's do, I've got here, I've got simple cubic, I've got BCC, I've got FCC. And I could write down, essentially, over here. Actually, I shouldn't have done it on this side. Should have kept on the other side. So I could do, actually, I'm going to flip it one more time. <laughs> Apologies. Uh, it's funny when you're doing problems live. Uh, so I'm going to do here uh, simple cubic, ECC, CC. So what are the number of atoms? The number of atoms. I have number nearest neighbors, nearest neighbor distance, next near, or actually not next nearest neighbor. What is my last primer A? What is the APF? What are my um, basically close pack? directions so here and then what are my close packed planes so like this so let's go ahead and let's try to kind of quantify these so let's go ahead and scroll down here these are really useful values to kind of have on your exam so number of atoms oops let me go down here so I've got number of atoms one two four number of nearest neighbors six 8, 12. What is our nearest neighbor distance? 2R, 2R, 2R. A uh, is going to be 2R square root of 2. What about here? This is going to be uh, equal to 4R over square root of 3. What about, actually, excuse me, our A here is just 2R. I always mistake that. But my next nearest neighbor distance uh, in simple cubic is, so my next nearest neighbor distance is equal to 2r square root of 2. So that's going to be a key value there. But anyways, what about my a here? It's going to be 2r square root of 2. So those are our values for a. Atomic packing vector, this is uh, basically less than 0 0.74, less 0 0.74. If you leave this is 0.68, I think this is pi over 6, but you can look back to the notes to kind of clarify that. Actually, we can look that together right now. Let's be kind as we go through these pages and let's go through our let's see here we go let's see what else where's our value here but anyways we can figure out the atomic packing factor actually let's go back through here we go let's find our page planes, directions, oh, this is good memories, right? The simpler days before we got to, <laughs> so atomic packing factor, here we go. For simple cubic, it is gonna be pi over six. For ECC, it is gonna be 0.68. So here we go. So let's go back to our problem. Uh, and let's walk through this here. So 0.68, and then here we have our magic number of 0 0.74. Close pack directions. So this family will be one, zero, zero. That family, what about here? It's going to be the 111 directions, and here it's going to be the 110 family of directions. Close packed planes, none, none, and here 111. So, useful kind of uh, value to your kind of chart to have. So, you perhaps might want to copy this down for your exam uh, to study. But, anyways, we've answered that question, and now let's figure out what are these planes and directions. So, right here, what's going on here? I crossed the origin, actually. I'm going to go ahead and do the directions first. So let's go ahead and label each of these directions. So I'm going to go ahead 
Let's do this one first. So I'm going to call this number one. So what is my finishing point? It's going to be one half. Uh, actually, it's going to be, excuse me, one. Actually, sorry, let me kind of, uh, put this here. We are going to be, actually, sorry, let me kind of clear some space here. Uh, so hopefully people have now this figure. So I'm going to kind of clear it out here. So I'm going to kind of label these. Different, I'm going to do different colors. I'm feeling different, a little colorful here. So I'm going to do this as red. So my finishing point is basically going to be one. So it's going to be one, one half, and then zero. So right here. Zero. What about my end point? This is going to be minus zero, one half, zero. So what's my direction? It's going to be parallel, so I've got one, zero, zero. So that's that first red direction. What about this direction here, this green direction? Well, my finish is zero, zero, zero. My start is minus one, one, zero. So that's going to leave me with one, one, hat, zero. There we go. I'm going to start to kind of erase a little bit here. Actually, not going to erase it. So let's go to over from here to here. So what is my, uh, right here, my finishing? It's going to be one, zero, one half, and then it's going to be minus my finishing point, or my starting point, excuse me, it's going to be zero, one, zero, so that's going to equal, let me go down here, write these up, so let's get my color, so it's going to leave me with one, one hat, and then one half, so I'm going to have to multiply that out, so it's going to leave me with two, two hat, one, and there we go. That's that direction there. Let's go ahead and let's look at another color. So I'm going to do, let's do black for here to here. So let's look at there. So what's my finishing point? Zero, one, uh, one, me, minus my starting point, which is going to be one, zero, one. So that's going to leave me with uh, one hat, one, and then, excuse me, let me just make this clear. So we finished at 0, 1, 1, and then it's going to be 0. There it is. So it's going the opposite direction. Uh, so we started at that 1, 0, 1 point. And then finally, our last direction, let's get another color. Let's do orange. I'm going to go from here to here. And that's going to be my finishing point. It's going to be 0, 0, 1. My starting point is going to be, uh, let's go over here, minus. It is going to be one half and then one zero. So that's going to leave me with uh, one hat half. And it's going to be one hat and then one. So that's going to be now multiplied by two. Excuse me. One hat, uh, two hat, one hat, two hat, two. There we go. Those are my directions. So. Those are all the directions that we can kind of do here. So now let's get into uh, calculating our planes. Let me kind of erase things right here and make this a little cleaner environment. So hopefully everyone wrote that down, or if you're, you could just rewind the video. That's the beauty of YouTube. So let's get into our plane. So, uh-oh, we're crossing the origin. So I know I need to redefine my origin here, O prime. So this is my new x-axis. This is my new x, this is my new y. So where are, my, uh, where are my intercepts? So my intercepts, intercepts are x equals minus 1. Do I ever intercept y? Nope. So y equals infinity. And then do I ever intercept z? Yep, I intercept z at equals 1 half. So when I do my slopes, or actually my hkl indices, so hkl, those are the inverses, so h equals 1 over x. So my is going to be 1 bar, 0, 1 over infinity is 0, and then 2. That's it. So 1 hat, 0, 2. So that's what we have for the first plane. What about this guy? So let's go ahead. Sorry, because I dropped my pen. Very, very, very similar uh, kind of procedure here. So I'm going to look at my intercepts. I'm going to do here. 
So again, I intersect my origin, so I'm going to have to redefine my origin. And I'm going to redefine my origin just right here. Again, very, very similar. So I have my origin, so I have my x, y. Do I ever intercept y? Nope. Where do I intercept x? Minus 1. Where do I intercept z? 2 here. You see it's going to intersect my z-axis eventually at 2. So that's going to allow me to do my h-scale indices. So my h-scale indices are 1 hat, 0, and 1 half. So now I need to multiply this to get 2 hat, 0, 1. So that's my plane there. Excellent. So we've I answered A. So which of any directions in A are closed-packed directions? What is the closed-packed plane in A? Well, BCC, so we know no closed-packed plane. We know that the only directions uh, uh, are that are closed-packed are these 1, 1, 1 directions, and I don't see any 1, 1 directions here. So no closed-packed directions, no closed-packed planes in BCC. Uh, in D, draw a BCC conventional unit cell and the 1, 1, 0 plane. Is this plane closed-packed? We've already answered this question. No closed back planes in BCC, and we want to justify quantitatively. So let's go ahead and draw here, 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 here. So I want to oops, uh, define my uh, draw this one minus one one plane. So actually, I'm going to go ahead and draw my origin, new origin right here. Let's go ahead and draw it in blue. So actually, I want to draw my new origin. I want to go backwards, so I'm going to draw my new origin right here. So this would be my new x, this would be my y. So where's my intercepts? So I know I'm going to cross at this origin here, I'm just now going to go to green. So I'm going to cross at, excuse me, here, uh, minus 1. I'm also going to cross uh, over here at, let's see, minus 1 over here. So I'm going to go ahead and cross here, here, here. So that appears to work, right? So let's go ahead and kind of think about that. So I'm crossing at one of my intercepts is minus 1 here. One of my intercepts in x is crossing over here. So there we go. We've got it. That's our 1, 1, or actually minus 1, 0, 1 plane. Because we're never crossing. Do we ever intersect our y-axis? So our x is here, our y is over here. Nope, we never intersect there, so we are good to go. So let's go ahead and get into our uh, next problem. Uh, so let's just make sure again, I'm going to try that, try to draw that a little bit clearer. So I'm intersecting here at minus x. We're never intersecting or crossing through that y. We're parallel to that y. And yep, I think I believe we are good to go. So. Uh, now we need to justify quantitatively calculating the planar density. So the planar density that we have here are, is this right here. So these are my number of atoms. So my planar density is equal to number of atoms, which is 2 here, quarter, 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 and then full. So 2 times pi r squared divided by this length here is a, and we know that this length here is a square root 2. So we know that because we're looking at that diagonal, right? So if I have my triangle, this is a right here, this is a right here, so a squared, so c squared equals a squared plus a squared, so c is equal to uh, 2a squared, so c is equal to square root of 2a. So that's kind of our values here. We know that a is equal to 4r over square root of 3, so I have a square root of 2 times a. So you can plug that in now into Mathematica. Let's go ahead and do that right here. Do, do, do. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Opening up Mathematica for the first time. Again, you can see I'm not going to really use Mathematica too much for this uh, exam. So you don't really necessarily have to have a, a function there. So, But I'm going to find a is equal to 4 times r, 4 times r divided by square root of 3, and then I have simply 2 times pi times r squared divided by a times a times square root of 2, and we know our magic number needs to be 9.09, .09, and let's see, 9.096, and as we expected, not a close back plane. 
So now we need to go into our PDF and RDF, and then eventually we're going to have to do our burger circuit. So let's go ahead and let, get started looking at this RDF and PDF. And actually, let's read back the problem, uh, the problem right here. All right. So for, uh, for this problem, fortunately, I'm out of the ancient length scale. Uh, now looking at the, the structure from different length scales, um, I'm able to calculate an RDF PDF. Um, plot is incomplete. One thing I do know is the integral of the first peak is 12. So if I know the integral of my first peak is 12, I am dealing with what type of material? Because the integral of my peak, first peak, is going to give me my number of nearest neighbors. That's equal to 12. I know the material is FCC. So I know that this value is going to be 2R. This value here is going to be my next nearest neighbor distance, A, which is going to be 2R square root of 2. So I can go ahead and plug that in and solve for R. So 5.97, uh, actually solve 5.97, set equal to uh, 2 times R times square root 2, figure out what R is. So R is equal to 2 point, uh, that is going to be my metallic radius. So you can kind of finish off the value there. So 2 times 2, that should be the value there. And so my metallic radius is 2.1. So let's go to our periodic table, which we'll need for this exam. So let's look at, so we need a FCC material. So this kind of right here. So we need something like this, this type of structure. And that has a metallic radius of 2.11. Or where is our metallic radius? 2.11. So let's see, do we see anything that matches? Mm, I'm not seeing anything right now. Uh, you could look at silicon, which has a basically a van der Waals radius. So maybe silicon right here. That could be an answer. So silicon. Again, is that a metal? Though? Is that a semi-metal? Uh, let's see. Is there any other kind of candidate here that might work? I'm not really seeing. Uh, Two point one one. Yeah, I don't really see it. And again, we want metallic radii uh, instead of van der Waals radii. So let's go ahead. Let's look on the other side. But I'm pretty sure silicon would be our only answer, and uh, that's a kind of a poor answer at that. So let's see. Anything else? Any other values? Nope, I don't really see anything on this table. So maybe silicon could be the answer, but um, that would be kind of my solution there. So let's look at the last. Uh, so we label the x-axis. We can figure out what the material is. Should be, you know, silicon perhaps, but there might be no material as well. Um, hungry for the last circuit, so burger circuit. So there are dislocations. Uh, are there dislocations in A, B, and C? Uh, if, so, if so, what type of dislocation? Draw this burger circuit and tangent. So remember, when we're drawing the burger circuit, we're going to do our uh, start to finish right hand circuit. So we need to define our tangent, and then we'll work from there. So let's go ahead and let's look at this. So I'm going to draw my tangent like this. I'm going to do my starting point right here. And I could actually go through the hole. And I can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, because again, I'm going to go with right hand rule. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So here, 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 here. My burger circuit is zero, so no defects. What about here? So let's go ahead. I'm going to have my burger, I have a tangent vector over here. So coming out of the board. So I'm going to choose, let's start here. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So my start to finish, it's just going to be right here. And that is going to be an edge because my T is perpendicular to my B. Finally, here I'm going to start right here at this point. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2. So again, where am I going? Again, oh, sorry, excuse me. Chose my tangent vector, so went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, actually, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2. So 
finish, start to finish. So my T is perpendicular to B, so that is going to be what type of screw? A right-hand screw. So that's it, problem one in a nutshell. Kind of a dense problem uh, you, you want to kind of go through, but uh, again, doable, lots of places to show your knowledge, and next time we're going to get into problem two. So let me know if you have any questions, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.